Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In the previous episode we had a fairly easy time getting to orbit, but that's probably because of my general experience with the game more than the fact that things are too easy for me. After all, we haven't uh, unlocked most of the upgrades yet, like the mission control upgrade or VAB or anything like that. And we haven't amassed a huge amount of funds yet. If we do, I'll think about reducing the contract payouts. I already did set it to 70%, but I can reduce it more if it turns out that uh, we're having too easy of a time. But uh, for now, this is good enough. We did unlock the Astronaut Complex Level 2. And so now we have an Explore Kerbin contract, which says go on an orbital spacewalk near Kerbin. Um, so we might as well do that and get all that EVA science, right? Also, we've got a cross the radiation belt contract, and I want to pick that up because why not? Um, that seems like a good thing to do. I feel like I should have contract configurator just to get rid of all the engine test things and probably the focused observations, which I have no intention of doing. That's more for if I wanted to fly a plane or something, which um, I don't feel like flying a plane is going to be testing the effects of Kerbalism very much. So even though I like planes, that's really not what we're here to do. So anyway, I have built a rocket. You'll note that my funds right now are a little bit lower than maybe the uh, you saw at the end of the last video, and that's because I've unlocked a few fuel tanks. I unlocked the Terrier engine, the Hammer booster. Um, I, we already had the flea, of course. And so the rocket I came up with was this Moon One. It's a fairly typical design from previous series. And yeah, of course it looks quite a lot different now that they've updated the textures. I uh, was probably confused last time about the how to set this because I just wasn't looking up here. But we do have a sea level and vacuum option here now. And so that's very important for reading the delta V of these things and also the thrust to weight ratio. So we see with these boosters on the side, we have a thrust to weight ratio at sea level of 1.89, which is feisty. So we'll be throttling this down. You'll note I ignite it right away because basically it's the only thing that's giving us, well, there is the pod giving us control, but it's better to have it on. I could just throttle it down so that it's uh, the thrust to weight ratio is not too bad. I've also thrust limited these to 60% so they last a little bit longer rather than have you know all the oomph up front. And that leads up to a burn time of 39 seconds. And it's interesting how this works. It shows the continuation of this engine's burn on this stage uh, after the boosters decouple. So it does handle that properly. That's nice. And uh, so that's those are the sea level numbers, but that's not very good for the terrier stage, which is what we have here. We have the terrier engine here. And so we want to go to vacuum to see the quote unquote real numbers. And if we take a look at that, we see we have pretty substantial delta V, 4, 000, uh, sorry, 5,400 or so altogether. And um, that'll be good. That'll be good enough for the moon. That's why it is called moon one. But we're not going to the moon just yet. This time we're just going to go to a high orbit and uh, hang out and then bring the Kerbal back. I've uh, made sure that we put the rest of the ablator on here, but I don't know about the whole radiation shielding business. And taking a look, uh, this time we should send Jib up. It says turn. And I don't see any reason why we shouldn't go. We've got um, two contracts and that's what we need. So obviously we're going to aim for high over Kerbin this time. Throttle up, SAS on, and pitch is wiggling already. Okay, launch. We still have a 30 part limitation. I'm gonna throttle down like I said I would. Let's just push on through here. Great. Right. I put fins on, especially for this part, it makes it a little bit more stable and allows me to turn a bit more quickly, but I probably should have been more aggressive on the turn to begin with. The high thrust to weight ratio makes it a little bit hard, especially since the nozzles on the SRVs don't gimbal. Not the most efficient launch ever. 
Okay, that's the end of that stage. So first ignition of the Terrier. And this stage has roughly 3,000 meters per second delta V, one of these tanks, one of those tanks. Only reason I'm not going to the moon is because we don't have a contract for it yet. We do need to add some more electric charge for a moon mission. Okay, we have an orbit, but we want a high orbit. I'm gonna go to a thousand kilometers. See how the heat shield fares like that. Okay, that'll do. All right, let's start with some EVA business, huh? Okay, no sliding off. Uh, no mod propellant in the... Oh, so mod propellant is shared here. That's interesting. Very important to note. Do not remove helmet. EVA report. Keep. Okay, and the data was transferred. Board. Yeah, so we're going to have to have mod propellant in the pod in order to have the suit ha uh, have some. That wasn't true in previous versions. Um, that reads the temperature. Do we have a... Re oh, we now have a radiation reading here. Uh, we didn't have that in the last episode, I don't think. 0.01 rad per hour. Okay, but I don't know exactly what the limits are. Oh, this is all water. And then here... Around here, we're over some new territory. Uh, crossing Kerbin radiation belt exposed to extreme radiation. How extreme? Wow, one rad per hour and increasing dramatically. Let's pin that. Um, will it be bad to have him pop out? <laughs> okay, EVA report. High over Kerbin. Keep. We're already high over Kerbin. Didn't have to go as high as I did. Wow, it's going to four rads per hour. Jeb is getting severely irradiated. And there is electric charge consumption even though SAS is not on. Okay, now we're through the radiation belts. It's back to normal radiation. I guess that's the normal background radiation. That doesn't make too much... I mean, the sun would still produce more radiation out here than it does close to Kerbin. So I'm not entirely sure I like that distribution, but... We'll go with that for now. So we fulfilled our contracts, right? We've done these records. Uh, we've done the Explorer Kerbin thing because we did the EVA. And we crossed the radiation belt. Okay, we haven't done all the EVAs we could do, I think, but this is a good start. Well, that will certainly bring us down. And the reason we have to come down after one orbit is because of our electric charge, of course. So let's take a look at the Geiger counter again as we go down. Oh, we should have... Uh, did we actually get the readings? Log radiation data, keep. Temperature data, make sure we've kept that. Okay. Okay, and peak radiation is 10, it looks like. Nice round number to remember. It's a thousand times the background. Everything looks good. Okay, this is going to be pretty intense compared to the last time. Wow, we only used 33 ablator, so... Still pretty good on the ablator. I, I'm sure packing 100 will be enough for the moon. Okay, parachute deployment. Let's see, I mean, yeah, we've gotten this data before. Good. Okay, plop, and let's just check things. Well, deserts apparently we have not done. And let's try the crew report. We didn't really do a crew report high over Kerbin, but again, we, we can do that later. And we've done an EVA report at the desert before. Okay, recover vessel. 21 science earned there, and we got some extra science from the contracts, I presume. 
and Jeb is now at level one. So good times. Are they gonna let us go to the moon? Yes. Fly by the moon. So let's pick up that contract. And uh, we it's clear we need more power. Um, and basic science here we have a battery pack. I don't. Did we get uh, any sort of solar panel? We got radiators here. It's not really telling me how irradiated Jeb got in that whole business. I mean, we could calculate it out, but... And I don't know what the limit is either. Interesting, the radiators are placed pretty quickly. And here's the solar panel. It's like they're telling me something about radiators being important, but... Anyway, uh, let's get this uh, basic science, always important. Perhaps we'll use fuel cells. So taking a look at what information it does give me, uh, now that we've crossed the radiation belts, I was hoping that we would get some more information, but it's still only talking about G-forces there. And, um, and then down here, we've got Electric charge, the consumption, duration, living space is cramped, comfort none, uh, pressurized no. Oh, that's pretty sad too. Uh, that means they gotta be in the suit the whole time. And I guess that is the maximum duration that we can keep them in there for, nine days and five hours. And that is the volume, surface of enabled habitats, scrubbing not required, humidity, none and pressurization none so we've got that information i've added the shielding because i don't want to fry jeb in radiation yet <laughs> um, so i'm gonna trust that this much radiation shielding is going to help but i'm not sure also uh it should be noted that whatever this was reading on the outside that should be outside the capsule. I don't know what the radiation was on the inside of the capsule. Uh, I didn't really check that, if it even tells me. So that's another question. Otherwise, uh, let me uh, try and give this a sort of service module sort of situation with power. And I guess we're going to have fuel cells. Fuel cells and battery packs. It says a monoprop oxygen fuel cell or a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. I don't have hydrogen. Can I get it to work off of uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer? Is it fair to give me a, a fuel cell without the fuels for it? Configure fuel cell. That produces water. Why do I feel like I'm missing something that Kerbalism requires. I thought it was a standalone mod, but hmm. Well, we do have mod propellant in here. I decided to put that in there, so it can run off of that. Uh, can, but how do I change it to a mod propellant fuel cell? Well, we'll fly it and see how it works. Can't transmit anything yet. We were pretty close to losing communication on the last mission at the height we reached. But we have a Kerbal in. So maybe that's good enough. Or maybe I should put some antennae on. But if I put an antennae on, we're going to go above the part limit. Let's see what happens with this. Okay, well, actually we could do a launch pad test on the fuel cells, huh? Um, running. Okay, well they're not uh, they're not working on what I've got. Yep, it wants hydrogen and oxygen. Let me recover this right now. I, I'm not confident that we can get to the moon and back with the electric charge that we have. Do we get hydrogen and oxygen somewhere? Okay, so here we have a pressurized tank that uh, produces uh, that can carry hydrogen and oxygen so and then there's a supply container here we haven't even dealt with supplies yet supplies food water sewage waste wastewater hmm interesting difference between sewage waste and wastewater but okay um, and a chemical plant so here is here is where we get really fancy about stuff 
possibly we should not go to the moon. I mean, it's interesting that it's at the same level as the solar panels, because to some extent the fuel cells are going to be redundant with the solar panels. I have no idea why we would unlock fuel cells before we have the ability to power the fuel cell. Hmm. But okay. We also have this external life support system. But I don't think I need that for a moon mission right now, at least not a mooner flyby. And I'm not gonna, even though the state putnik is now really shiny, I'm not gonna try and use it because it doesn't have enough control. Another interesting thing is that when I click configure pod here, it gives me the scrubber and pressure control here. But here it says pressurization is none, but it says here, use nitrogen to maintain the internal atmosphere at a comfortable pressure. Apparently it's not comfortable enough. Um, pressure control says it's running here. What happens if I increase the life support quality? Well, it doesn't change these numbers at all. But you can have two pressure control systems here. Or you can have humidity control that adds more cost. Does it actually? Yeah, uh, well, okay, here it goes from 302 up there to 352 that's 50 extra so apparently this one costs 250 and this costs 300 the scrubber is 250 but I'm not seeing the result of choosing to have pressure control down here taking a look at the science situation contrary to what I've been used to in previous versions of KSP we can't really do an EVA report uh, near Kerbin over each of the surface biomes. It looks like it's just all lumped into one EV report now instead of constantly popping out at each biome to get more science. So that's a little bit of a downer. On the other hand, uh, we still haven't brought goo up into space yet at all, so that's something we should do. And so uh, we now have a science junior, so that's another source of science. And I'm looking at sources of science because I think we either need to unlock solar panels or unlock space exploration in order to manage our moon mission. So let's uh, see what I can put together for that. Okay, so I've taken off the boosters and decided to put a Science Junior in two goo containers to get some science and we'll have the Kerbal EVA out. I've added five units of mod propellant just in case and uh, the Kerbal will EVA it out and get the Science Junior and Goo. In fact, I don't think the Kerbal can crawl over there to get... Well, we'll see. We'll see whether the Kerbal can just hang on here to get those or whether um, he or she will need to EVA with the pack and use the mod propellant to get to it. Um, the shielding, it's, it's interesting. We should take a look at how heavy it is and also how much it costs. So we've got 2.1 units of shielding here. And if we dump it, that's a pretty substantial amount of mass there. It seems like, well, let's see, one unit, we can't really hit one unit. Um, it seems like one unit is 0.2 tons. And so 2.1 units is about a little over 0.4 tons. And the cost is fairly cheap. It's about uh, 50 per unit of shielding. So that's what we've got there. I think I'll just put one unit of shielding this time. Not sure what it does yet, really. Maybe we'll get some more feedback later on. But, uh, well, maybe if I change... Oh, environment here. Okay, so we can change these so that they show different things. Temperature. Difference between external and survival temperature. Atmosphere, yes. Okay, so this is where we have atmosphere. Time in shadow during orbit. Hmm. Well, Valentina's in. We didn't launch Valentina on the previous mission, so it'll be Valentina going up this time. I guess that'll be alright. We're just gonna try and get some goo and science junior from space, have Valentina EVA out, and grab the science. So, launch. Oop. Quite a slow ascent. Of course, we haven't done goo everywhere on Kerbin yet. Okay, and Terrier. 
just out of curiosity, maybe I should take a look at what it offers. 10 science for recovery at this altitude. And mystery goo? 5 science. But, where is it? We have 22 science and so we need 68. So probably this mission isn't going to do it for us. But let's get the on-orbit science first. And maybe high over Kerbin as well. Okay. We are in orbit 94 by 79. Let's do the goo. 5.6 science only. Keep experiment. Record data. Okay, uh, I guess it brings it into here. We don't even have to have the Kerbal EVA out. That's efficient. Observe materials bay. I mean, and that also makes sense. Let's keep. Record data. Yep, it all goes in here. Well, let's boost up to a high orbit then. I think that should do the trick already. So, are we going to get any more information about our status like this? Okay, oh, oh, I see. So, if I click this Goo 1 here, it shows the information. No sensors installed as far as the environment here. It shows the battery, the habitat information. Um, it doesn't let me switch like it did in the VAB. But there's data here. Auto. These are the devices. Log. Whoa. That's a lot of stuff. But that's um, all the stuff that's happened so far, I guess. All the alerts that it gave me. Configuration. Okay, hopefully this is going to be high enough. And I did take off the Geiger counter, so that's probably why I don't have the radiation reading. Let's see, observe mystery goo. High over Kerbin, good. 8.4 science, keep and record. And we want a crew report this time. We didn't get that last time. So that's in there too. I think we did the EVA, right? EVA report, yeah. Okay, well with that uh, we're basically done here. Okay, we're gonna separate off the quote-unquote service module. I'll just call it, call it the Terrier stage. And hopefully that'll be alright. Okay, well, I hope we don't hit the mountains. <laughs> um, uh, I think I might have estimated a little bit too closely here. Yeah, well, obviously landing right at the KSC would have been ideal, but this will do just fine. Okay, parachute deployment. And splash down. All right, recover vessel. Thirty-one point seven science earned. We're at fifty-four. We didn't fulfill any contracts, so there weren't any bonuses. So we still need thirty-six science somehow. Um, science day from space round Kerbin. They're willing to give us uh, a bonus two science if we get some science back. We should probably just pick that up just to fund another science mission. But what should we bring up? I guess we haven't done Science Junior High over Kerbin. We only did that low over Kerbin, so that's one thing. So we can do that. Okay, here we go. We've basically got a repeat of the previous mission, except this time we're going to do the Science Junior at a high altitude over Kerbin, and we're going to do the goo containers in the atmosphere. So. And maybe we'll end up landing on a different biome, in which case we could go polar. That's another thing. Yeah, why don't we go polar? <laughs> I 
just thought of that. Uh, maybe we should try and land at the pole. No guarantee of that, but that's a possibility, and that'll get us different science. So, yep, I still don't think we're going to end up with enough, but we'll see. So, heading north. Launch. Interesting that they didn't give us a contract to go into a polar orbit or anything like that. I really don't like the selection of contracts, and maybe contract configurator will eventually be necessary. Certainly, as we get down to making bases and stations, which I think would be a good idea, because that's really how you're going to test Kerbalism out, I think uh, the various contract packs that are offered with contract configurator will help. Of course, there is sort of a mission system built in, but I, I, I think those are specific scenarios that's not quite the same thing. I'm not sure. The last time I really seriously played stock was a long time ago. <laughs> I don't even remember. Uh, I, I played briefly in 1.4 and briefly in 1.3 I think. I think 1.2 was a little bit more substantial. Well, have we got uh, Good mystery goo location now. Well, five science, I'll take it. So if we are going to try and land at the pole, we are going to want to keep ourselves low there, which means we'll do our boost up burn there in order to boost our apoapsis up to do the science junior. Not a huge amount of spare delta V here. I need a little bit more. Okay. So that's pretty good. We've only got 532 meters per second left, so we have to watch that a bit as we go to a high orbit now. Ooh, extreme radiation here. That's interesting. We're only at 96 kilometers. Still didn't carry a Geiger counter this time. I guess the poles, the radiation is a little bit closer to the atmosphere, huh? There's some auroras there. Okay. I don't know. Any chance that auroras affect goo differently? Not really. Okay, Science Junior. 16.8 signs. Well, that's something. Okay, bringing the orbit down now. And hopefully we'll end up at the pole. We'll see. I don't think we're going to make it to the pole. I really don't want to hit that water. If we can just avoid that, maybe we'll hit something else. I mean, we're in Aurora Zone, so hopefully that means this is sort of Tundra-ish. Let's see, what do we have here? A flying over Kerbin's Grasslands? Well, okay, well, apparently we haven't done that yet, so I'll take it. Well, grasslands aren't so special. Okay, we have landed. We've done a crew report from the grasslands and probably an EVA report too. Yep. Okay, board. And recover. 24.8 science earned. 80 science points, but we needed 90 altogether. Okay, rather than do something too adventurous, let me see what I can get from around Kerbin first. Um, is there launch? Yep, there's launch pad science. So 3.4 science here. Let's record that. And mystery goo? Not so much. And how about a crew report? Not really. So uh, let's try and launch and see where we can get to. Now we can't really land with the rocket. So it's just got to be a crew report there. Hmm. 
Maybe I should reconfigure this as some sort of a hopper instead. I think we've got re radial parachutes. Let's recover this. Okay, I think we're gonna get into some serious design works here finally. And I'm going to do my typical sort of arrangement. What we've got here is one of the FLT200 fuel tanks. And the T100s I'm gonna put radially like this. It's just the fuel tanks and nothing else. And right now it seems like that allows crossfeeding without a fuel line. Long time ago in KSP versions far far away that used to not work but now it does. And I've unlocked the thud engine which has a lot of gimbal range and is also fairly good at sea level. It's a little bit bad on the thrust to weight ratio though but uh, we need two because it's a radial engine and gonna tuck it like this. The reason I'm using it is a low profile thing. I mean I guess we could use this but you see the sea level ISP on this is actually worse than the thud engine and I mean, one thing we could do is you know tuck this in like that and that's not too bad as far as having a, a low profile but I, I like the thud version better especially since we're going to recover it um, and I mean hopefully <laughs> hopefully we're going to recover it. Uh, in that case it's a good deal. It's a little bit expensive otherwise. So I want it like that and then we can put the landing struts like this and then we have a pretty good lander. Hopefully. Hopefully this is a pretty good lander. Uh, I put extra radial parachutes. This gives us 1636 meters per second at altitude at zero altitude vacuum it's 1800 hardly any different the downside to this carbon lander of course is it's got a lot of drag to it so that's not ideal but let's see how it works otherwise and we're going to go retrograde we're going to go towards the mountains and maybe try and land close to them maybe highlands is what we're aiming for so ignition <laughs> The gimbal range is nice. Ah, oh, a bit short. Ah, oh, shucks. Let's see if we can do the materials bay here. 10 science. That actually does the trick already. I didn't even have to go through all this. But anyway, it'll be instructive. Okay, Jeb. Uh, hold retrograde, please. Ah, uh, I don't want to be pointing nose down. That's not good. That's not good at all. Um, let's deploy the parachutes to avoid potentially going faster than we want to. Uh, it sure looks like grasslands to me down there. On some other world, of course, we'd put the terrier engine instead of these thud engines. Okay, anyway, at least we got the full value back except for the fuel. And we've got our science. So, in the R&D, um, well, it's a choice between plunging ahead with the fuel cells, uh, with the hydrogen, oxygen, and all this business, or instead going with solar panels. I mean, ultimately, solar panels take less mass, right? I mean, there's a whole lot more overhead when you're trying to use these pressurized tanks as well as the fuel cells feel like just using the solar panels would be just more economical. That's why I think maybe this pressurized, pressurized tank should have gone in basic science because then the fuel cells would have been the only option at this stage and um, the uh, which is true of uh, a lot of early systems. You see fuel cells of course on Gemini and Apollo and uh, solar panels now on Orion because solar panels weren't you know, considered as reliable, I guess, or efficient back in the day. But, um, yep, I think I'm gonna go with solar panels here. And also we get the Probodobodyne Octo, which is gonna be super useful in all sorts of situations. All right, so next time we will go to the moon and we will do other things because now we have a probe core that is not the Stay Putnik and I have more faith in it. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. 
If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.